What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. It's been about a week since last time we spoke here on the Drone Geeks channel. I've been in Denver, Colorado for AUVSI, the Exponential 2023 show, and it was awesome. Now, as awesome as it was, I was doing a lot of hard work for the droning company there, doing lots of interviews with folks attending the show, including lots of exhibitors. And we had over 45 videos to edit, produce, get on the droning company's channel. So that's what I've been doing for the past few days. And I haven't had any time to breathe really until I got those done. Speaking of those videos, if you want to check any of those out, you weren't able to attend Exponential 2023 and you want to see some of the cool exhibits and cool companies that were there, go ahead and check out the link up in the corner of this video. It's going to take you to the droning company's channel and their playlist for Exponential 2023 with yours truly conducting all of the interviews. In short, I went to the Mile High City and I saw a lot of cool shit. I mean, I saw stuff ranging from a cargo drone that could carry like three of me all the way to a security system that was remotely piloted. I mean, the guy that was showing me the demo for this particular drone setup was in Denver with me and was able to control drones that were stationed in Switzerland. It was very, very cool technology, plus technology from all of the major players that we know and love in the drone industry. On top of that, I got to connect with a lot of really cool people as well, old and new. I got to see my friends Stuart Smith and Don DeVille from The Droning Company. Got to meet up with my friend El Waddick as well. I also got to hang out with Billy Kyle, Ken Dono, John McBride, Bobby Quinn, Adrian Doko, Greg Reverdio, and Johan Beischlein from Pilot Institute, and many, many others that I could sit here and just continue to name. But all in all, it was just an awesome time filled with awesome memories and even better people awesome experience at Exponential 2023. If you didn't get a chance to visit this year, make sure you mark your calendar for next year. It's going to be in San Diego and yours truly is planning on attending. But of all the information that I soaked up throughout the week at Exponential 2023, there was one conversation that just seemed to keep reoccurring. No matter what exhibitor I visited or what conversation I entered into, beyond visual line of sight operations came up almost every single time I interacted with somebody. And I'm gonna go ahead and refer to that as Bevelos for the rest of this video, just because that's a mouthful to say. But Bevelos was a very, very prominent conversation topic throughout the whole duration of the show. And I was mildly surprised by that. Now, I know it's an important topic in the world of drones right now. It's a conversation piece that's happening. There's a lot of legislation that's going through that may or may not make it through with regard to Bevelos and how we handle those operations. But why I was surprised is because Remote ID, the final stage of it, is going into effect this September. Now, I know the FAA is saying that Remote ID is already here, and it is because manufacturers as of last September were required to produce drone technology that had Remote ID transmission capabilities. So Remote ID is here, but when I say Remote ID isn't here, what I mean is pilots don't have to adhere to compliance with Remote ID yet. We have until September of 2023 until that happens. So that being said, Remote ID is looming, the final stage of it is looming, and here we are talking about Bevelos operations. And then I started to think about it, and I thought, you know, it makes sense. Remote ID is in place, it's going to happen, and there's really nothing we can do to stop it at this point. So now it's sort of time to move on to the next pain point in the world of drones, and that is beyond visual line of sight. Now, if you aren't familiar with what visual line of sight or beyond visual line of sight means, maybe you're new to drones, maybe you've never flown a drone before and you're just stumbling upon this video, trying to learn a little bit about it before you jump in, I'm gonna give you a quick crash course on what visual line of sight is and why it's important to drone operations. As of right now, remote pilots, both hobbyists and professionals, are required to maintain visual line of sight with their drone while they're flying. Now, this can either be maintained via the pilot's own naked eye or with the help of a visual observer, which also needs to be a human using their naked eye. So your pilot can actually be flying with FPV goggles, can have their line of sight broken with the drone, but at the end of the day, somebody involved with the operation of the drone directly, whether it's the RPIC, the remote pilot in command, or the VO, the visual observer, one of those two people must always have eyes on the drone and must always be able to just communicate with one another throughout the course of the flight without the aid of like a walkie-talkie. Basically, if you can't hear me while I'm yelling to you, 
that means that we're too far away. We need to be closer together if I'm your acting VO. Now, there are exceptions to that rule, and one of them being a safety concern. If you are trying to stay away from a manned aircraft, give way to a manned aircraft, you are allowed to temporarily break your visual line of sight with your drone if you have to in order to avoid that manned aircraft and give it the leeway that it needs to pass through safely. You're also able to apply for waivers with the FAA for a beyond visual line of sight operation, which would mean throughout the duration of your operation, you do not need to maintain visual line of sight on your drone, but you have to apply for that waiver. And that's where one of the big hitching points in this whole conversation is right now, the FAA being a bureaucratic agency, being a government agency, isn't great at processing those applications. I spoke to a few people, including our friends at the Warren County Community College who have applied for BVLOS waivers and they're having just an incredibly difficult time getting through that process because I think they said they're around 97th in the queue and they've started out at like 150th and that was three years ago. So you can see that it's a very slow moving system. It's not efficient and it's not getting people's waivers processed quickly enough. On top of that, because they have such a backlog and because the FAA is so overwhelmed, they're not able to provide feedback when they have to deny applications. So these operations are putting tons of money and effort and investment into getting these waivers done. And then they're just being told no without any explanation as to why they were told no so that they can go back and correct their application and correct their plan so that they can be more compliant with the waiver system it's just it's a mess is what i'm saying and that's why the conversation is happening and why it's so pertinent especially right now in the world of drones and just to sort of wrap up the explanation of visual line of sight this was put into place to make flights safer overall if a pilot can maintain visual line of sight or a visual observer aiding a pilot can maintain visual line of sight with a drone that lessens the chance of the pilot losing control of the drone or losing direct links with the drone meaning that people could be at risk of having the drone go errant and run into property people you name it so again now that we've established what visual line of sight and beyond visual line of sight mean let's talk about some of the reasons why this conversation is happening and why everybody is looking at how we can reconfigure beyond visual line of sight operations and how we handle them we already touched on this just a couple of minutes ago we'll talk about it real quick here again first and foremost the system that's currently in place for processing applications for bvelos operations is completely inefficient and way too clunky as it currently stands. You've got people waiting for years just to have their application looked at by the FAA, and that's not even guaranteeing they're going to approve it. They may deny it, which means back to the drawing board and back to waiting for potentially another few years before eyes get back on your application. On the heels of that, the list of waiver applications is only growing and the FAA already can't handle the backlog that they've got now. So we've got this problem with this exponentially growing list of waiver applications for BVLOS operations and there's just not enough resources to be able to accurately process them, provide feedback and move on to the next one. It's just, it's not gonna happen. And to wrap up with a couple of positive notes on why this conversation is being had so seriously right now, BVLOS operations are going to open the door to a lot of different variety of flight operations and ways that drone technology can be utilized for the betterment of society and the betterment of our economies. When you expand that footprint for how far drones can go away from their remote pilot in command, you make it so that they can fly BVLOS, all of a sudden you're creating a lot of opportunities for the technology to do good for humanity. Not to mention there are some companies that see it as a really, really good thing for their bottom line. Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. And on that note, we do open seriously the door to the idea of having companies like Amazon, Walmart, CVS, you name any of the big retail stores to be able to provide actual drone delivery services. I'm talking about a warehouse that has a fleet of drones that are picking up packages and delivering them to your doorstep within like 10 or 15 minutes of you placing the order. Put that idea out there to consumers. All of a sudden, this sounds like a really, really good idea. And you tend to gain a lot of support. And you know, that sort of brings me to my last point in the video. And that is what does Bevelos look like after all of these conversations are had and after all of this legislation is passed. And I wish I had an answer for you, but I, I just don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. And I haven't seen any information out there that indicates what we'll be dealing with once everything is sort of buttoned up. 
I've heard a few rumors, and I'm going to share those with you now, but I just need to be very, very clear that these are, at this point, just rumors. The first rumor that I heard is that the FAA intends on hiring a bunch of personnel to process those applications more expediently and more efficiently. That would allow them to not only get through the backlog that they've had, but handle overflow as it comes to them. It will also provide them the ability to actually provide explanations for why waivers might be declined. So you won't just get a no, you're not allowed to do it. It'll be no, you're not allowed to do it and here's why, which means that you can go back and file your application over again, making adjustments to your plan so that you fall into a more healthy compliance with BVLOS operations. Another rumor, and again, this is just a rumor, I don't know how true this is, but it's sort of interesting to me, is the addition of a new certification for pilots. Now, you already have your Part 107, and you have your trust certificate for hobbyist flights, but then you have your Part 107 for commercial, and then the idea is to add this new certificate, which would allow pilots, once they've attained it, to then fly beyond visual line of sight. The name that I'm hearing for it right now, tentatively, is Part 108. Again, I don't know how true that is. I don't want to give that too much merit, because it could just be a complete line of bullshit. But at this point, I am hearing some whisperings of that being a possibility as well. And the last rumor that I've heard as it relates to beyond visual line of sight operations has to do with the category in which your drone falls. So if you're flying a drone that is 55 pounds or less, you can just fly beyond visual line of sight. You're good to go. There will be nothing more required required of you. If you're flying something between 56 pounds and I think 1300 pounds, you need to pass an airworthiness checklist to make sure that you are capable to fly beyond visual line of sight in a safe manner. And anything larger than that would require additional checklists, additional waivers, and additional permissions from the FAA and coordination from the FAA on the operation. Again, I cannot stress enough, these are just rumors. So don't take that as like law. Now, my word here is not law. This is just what I'm hearing, and I don't know how it's going to pan out. But that's why I'm here. Today's video isn't really to tell you what's going on. I did want to inform you a little bit that this conversation is being very seriously had by a lot of the big names in the industry. It's more so to get your feeling. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think that we will see beyond visual line of sight operations be very, very common in the near future? And if so, how do you think that's going to look? And if you don't think that we're going to see that in the near future, why do you think that way? Again, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be interested to hear what you have to say about it. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up button down below as well. It helps me out a lot. And if you really, really liked this video, hit the subscribe button while you're at it if you haven't already. And while you're down there, hit the bell icon too. It'll give you a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rockin' polo, we the